Hello everyone, Cindy here with Monarch Mom DIY. Thank you so much for joining me today on my channel where I love to bring you the best tips and tools for creating beautiful home decor on a budget. Today I am back with five more quick and easy fall home decor DIYs. So let's get crafting. For today's first DIY, we're going to be using these beaded hanger signs and make some two-sided Halloween and fall home decor. So the first thing we're going to do is taking these wood beaded signs that have the black. You'll see I had removed the beads from this one, but no worries, we're gonna add some beads back in. I love these signs, one, because of the beads added on there, and two, because it's so easy to get the backing in and out. Now here I am taking some time to remove some paper, but that is completely optional. You can just Mod Podge right over the backing, whatever it is. Next, I'm going to use my Fiskars paper trimmer and trim five inch by five inch square pieces. I'm gonna do two of these Halloween squares, and then I'm gonna do two squares that are more of a fall paper. Then taking some of my Mod Podge, I'm just going to brush that on one side of my backing for my sign. I'm going to spritz a little bit of water onto the back of the scrapbook paper. This just allows it to adhere even better to the Mod Podge without bubbles. Smooth that out and then we'll let that dry. So we're going to do this Halloween plaid paper on one side of each of our backings and then we're going to flip that over and do more of a fall paper on the other side. So these beaded hanging signs are going to have a Halloween side and just a general fall side. The stencils I'm using from Magnolia for this project are the Fall Minis from 2022. They are available on my Magnolia website, which is linked in the description box. It's got maybe five or six of these mini stencils that are Halloween, and then the rest are general fall themed. So it's a great set for doing lots of different little projects like this. Then I'm just using my coal black chalk paste on these pumpkin shape cutouts. We do have a set of cutouts that has four leaves, four pumpkins, and four acorns. You'll see me use the leaf and the acorn for the fall side of these two signs. The peel and reveal is always the most exciting part when you see the gorgeous stenciled image that you've made. So we'll clean those stencils, and as we let this stenciled words dry a little bit, I did decide to take a palette knife, and on the Halloween side, I'm just going over the edges of each of the pumpkins just to kind of, I don't know, dirty them up a little bit, make them look a little more worn and rustic for Halloween. Now for the fall side of each sign, I'm going to use one of these leaf cutouts for one of them, and then we'll use an acorn for the other one. This one being fall sweet fall, and then the other one will say fall in love. I love making projects that can stay out for more than just one holiday or season. So you could start with this sign hanging on the fall side, then flip it to Halloween for October, then flip it back to the fall side for November. And here's your peel and reveal using two colors on this stenciled image. And then we'll use two colors as well on the fall in love on the acorn. Now that the backs of our signs are dry with both pieces of paper Mod Podge on, we can pop this back into the sign with the Halloween side facing out and we'll save the fall side for the second time we put the signs on. I am going to make some new beaded hangers for these signs as I stole the beads for a different project and I'm using this fall set of beads that I purchased on Amazon.
Once we have those hangers how we want them, we'll just use a staple gun to staple them back into the back of the frame. I did spray my stenciled pumpkins, leaf, and acorn with a clear matte spray just to make sure that our chalk paste is now permanent on our pumpkin. In case it gets wet, it will not rub off. So we're gluing those to the Halloween side, and then I'm gonna go ahead and glue the leaf and the acorn to the back side or the fall side of our sign. Then when we want to change it, we can simply lift the tabs and turn our backing sheet around and have our sign now be for fall instead of Halloween. For DIY number two, we're going to be making this fall trio frame decor. I have these three clip frames that I've already attached to these two pieces of barn wood, but you could use these mini wood pallets from Dollar Tree or these other frames that have the little brackets. I just like the set of three, and I wanted to redo this board for fall. So I'm covering over the red. It was originally a Christmas decor, and I'm covering over all of the red with my Waverly chalk paint in ink, and I am gonna go up on the sides of the frames as well. Then these are the same wood cutouts I used to make my little fall gnome a few weeks back. I'm going to paint one of the ghosts with white, one of the pumpkins with pumpkin, and one of the witch's hats with ink. To add some more interest to my sign, I have this burlap and black um, ribbon, checked ribbon that I got at Hobby Lobby. It was just in their regular ribbon section when it was 50% off, I grabbed this. I thought it'd be great for farmhouse neutral fall decor. So I'm just doing one long strip on either side to fill in some of that space between the frames and the sides of the board. And then I'm gonna clip our witch's hat to the bottom clip our pumpkin to the middle one and our little ghost to the top one. Now the great thing about this is when it is time for the Christmas holiday, you could change out your little wood shapes and make them Christmas shapes because we're not adding any other color to this. It's just gonna be the black and the natural color. I did make a few little small burlap bows where I wrap them around my fingers and then tie them in the middle with a piece of jute and just added those to the three metal clips on these frames. Again, you can change this out for whatever season or holiday. I did hot glue the long strips of ribbon on the bottom, also the top on the back, and I did tack it down a few places along the edges on the front of the sign as well, just so it wouldn't move around. Last, I'm gonna take another loop of this same ribbon and also a long piece. We're gonna tie it in the center with jute and make a cute little simple bow. 
This is a wired ribbon, which makes it really easy to bend around and work with. Just tie the ends or cut the ends off of your jute twine, and then you can shape your bow however you'd like. And I did dovetail the ends of the tails so that they have that nice finished look. And then just go ahead and glue it to the top of the project. If you're stopping by my channel for the first time today, welcome. I'm so glad that you found me. I hope you'll consider sticking around by hitting that subscribe button. And I hope everyone will hit the bell to make sure your notifications are set to all. If you are a returning viewer or subscriber, thank you so much for your continued support of my channel. For DIY number three, we're going to be using some wood crates from Dollar Tree and also some paint sticks to make these patterned pumpkins. I'm going to be using three patterned stencils from Magnolia as well. The first thing I'm going to do is use my wood glue and glue two of my crates together to make a very tall, skinny pumpkin. Then we're going to have a single crate as a smaller, tall pumpkin and then one of our small crates will be on its side. That will give us our three different sizes. Now I don't want these to be open at the back, so I'm going to use some one gallon paint stir sticks from Lowe's. I'm marking off where I will need to cut my pieces so that I can glue those across the back and make these just hollow boxes rather than empty crates with that um, backside open. I'm going to glue these paint stick pieces on with my wood glue as well and use the wood glue to kind of seal the sides of each crate. For the tops of my pumpkins, I'm going to use these three wooden spools that I had in my stash. I'm pretty sure you can find these at any craft store. I am going to use two large ones and one small one. Now that my box pumpkins are all put together and all dried, I'm going to give them each a coat of my Waverly chalk paint in the color pumpkin. And this really only needed one coat, but I am going to paint all the sides and the top and the bottom. Now this part is optional, but once my pumpkins are dry, I'm going to use my three patterned stencils. I'm using these lines from the Christmas tree patterns and then also the mini dots and the mini plaid. Now if you don't want to purchase stencils, you could always add designs to your pumpkins using paint markers using stickers, or you could of course just leave them plain. I just love how these pattern stencils in just quick, easy step adds so much character to our pumpkins.
Once our pumpkins have their pattern all over them, I did spray them with a clear matte spray. Then I'm just taking some leaves from some Dollar Tree florals, gluing that down on the top of the pumpkin, and then gluing our little spool painted with truffle chalk paint. I did make some more of the jute twine simple bows, and I'm also gonna take three long strands, tie them in a knot around the stem or the spool, and then cut them like little tendrils just coming off um, from the stem, like they're left over from the vine. I just think this adds a really cute farmhouse touch, and you can trim those as long or as short as you'd like. If you love budget home decor DIY videos like this, I hope you'll consider giving this video a thumbs up as that lets YouTube know that people are enjoying my content and they will then show it to more and more viewers. For DIY number four, we're going to be using one of these triangle signs from Dollar Tree as well as some of these giant craft sticks from Walmart's craft section to make a simple but cute little candy corn decor for the fall. So here you can see I'm flipping it around and marking where I need to cut each of my craft sticks. About six of these are gonna fit perfectly with a little bit of space left at the top that you could either leave or just put a tiny little piece of wood. So I'm gonna cut a few of my sticks and then we'll start hot gluing those down, kind of like we did with our wood crate pumpkins. We're just closing off that open back side to make a hollow solid shape. Once we got all the craft sticks glued on, now I'm going to use some painter's tape to mark off the bottom section and the top section of our candy corn all the way around the triangle shape. 
then we'll be able to paint our bottom section yellow and our top section white and then once those are done we will retape and paint our middle section orange Then once all our paint is dry, I'm taking a little dot of hot glue and attaching some jute twine to the back. I'm going to wrap it around a bunch of times, kind of haphazardly around this bottom half of the orange section, and then we'll reattach the glue here at the back again. Then I'm going to use a little bit more jute twine to make, you guessed it, one of my little wrap around the fingers jute ribbons or bows. So we'll wrap it around our fingers a few times, tie it in the center, and then you can just glue that wherever you'd like just to add some farmhouse touch to the candy corn. Please check the description box below the title of this video for a list of all of the supplies I've used in today's projects, as well as links to my Facebook group for Monarch Mom DIY and my Magnolia Design Co. website. And for DIY number five, we're going to make this thankful acorn sign using one of the acorn wood signs from Dollar Tree, some of these leather words, some scrap of paper from Hobby Lobby, and more of the giant craft sticks from Walmart. So the first thing I'm going to do is apply a layer of Mod Podge to the entire front of our wood acorn and then we'll spritz some water on the back of the scrapbook paper. I was so excited. This was a new pattern that I had not seen before at Hobby Lobby, but we're just going to Mod Podge this on using the same method by spritzing a little bit of water. It just helps the paper stick to the Mod Podge without creating air bubbles. So we'll brush that on, we'll rub it out really good, make sure it's nice and attached. I love the sunflowers and the orange and teal pumpkins. And then once we know that it's down, we'll put another layer of Mod Podge over the front of the paper and then set that aside to dry completely. Now for the top part of the acorn, we're gonna use some of these giant craft sticks. We're just going to use the rounded ends, and I did save the middle part of the sticks for another project, but I'm gonna cut, um, I can't remember how many I did, maybe 15 to 20 of these sticks, and I cut both of the round ends off. Then we're going to use our antique wax, we're gonna brush it on, and then wipe off the excess to get a nice dark stained wood color to these little rounded ends of the craft sticks. Then once our scrapbook paper is completely dry, we'll flip it over on our cutting mat and using our Fiskars fingertip knife, we're gonna trim away all the excess scrapbook paper that's around the edges of our acorn. Once the paper is cut away, I will also use my small little sander in a downward motion to get any extra little bit of overhang of the paper off and get a nice smooth edge. Thank you. 
Now we're gonna arrange and glue on our little craft stick ends. We're starting at the bottom and I have it rounded just a little bit like the top of the acorn would be. And then we'll do one row at a time, applying new ones um, kind of in between the previous two. So we'll make about four rows of these and I'm just gonna place them. And then once I like how they're laying, I will go ahead and glue them down. You will see after I put the second row down that I'm going to put a few pieces behind just to make it a little more level for that third and fourth row of little pieces going in because they are sticking further out the more rows you go up. So here I just stuck a few of those pieces in there and now we're just gonna fill in the rest and then flipping it over to the back, I'm trimming it with my heavy duty scissors and then sanding the edge just to give it the rounded look. Now you can see I have the top part almost finished. To place these last couple, I'm just kind of drawing a line with my pencil to match the rounded edge of the top already. And then we'll glue these last two pieces of our acorn top into place. I did go around the edges of the acorn with a Sharpie just to kind of distress the edges a little bit and make it not so clean white of a cut. Next, we're going to punch the hole in the top of the acorn. And I started coloring it with a Sharpie and then I decided I wanted to wrap it with jute instead. But first, I'm gonna make our little hanger. We're gonna go through the hole and kind of um, make a little loop through the back and then we're gonna pull those strings through the loop of the string. Now that I have my hanger, I'm going to wrap the rest of the top of the acorn with some jute twine. Once we have the top all done, now I'm using one of these faux leather words that says thankful. If you can't find these or you'd prefer, you can also use one of the galvanized metal words that is in the fall craft section. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some wood beads to the hanger string. And I'm gonna use that same um, fall bead mix from Amazon just add a few on there for a little more of a decorative touch. Then we'll tie off the knot and this project will be complete. Thanks again for joining me today. Please let me know in the comments which of these projects was your favorite, and we'll see you next time. Take care.